So the first thing to do is get the sample logged in um, so your data is properly labeled and you know where your data is going to actually end up on the computer. Um, so you, you will be provided uh, some brief instructions on how to do this, but I'll demonstrate it here on the software. From the, um, the main screen here, the instrument um, acquisition screen, if we click on single run, the single run icon, um, that'll get us to the place where we can log in the sample. So single run, and then sample login opens up this screen. And this is where you provide things like the sample name. I'm going to just call this standard A. Um, sample ID, I'm going to say the same thing, standard A. And then the data file, which is really the folder and the uh, you want the data file in and the, the data file name. So there will be a chem2311 folder for the appropriate semester. Um, if you aren't in that folder, you can navigate to that. You can always click on the folder button and find your way around the tree. But chem2311, in this case fall 2017, is where I want to and I'm just going to name the standard A is going to be the file name. So not real um, original here, but the sample name, the sample ID, and the data file are all going to just basically describe the sample. When you get to your actual samples, you can say aftershave or bourbon or moonshine, whatever the sample happens to be. So once you've entered those three things on the sample login, you simply say OK there. And then we're going to click start on the computer, which is this icon here. And you'll notice that the instrument goes from ready. When I click on start, after a second it says ready standby. It's basically waiting for me to make the injection. So that's all you need to do on the computer to get it ready for the data. The next part is um, making the injection. We're going to inject one microliter sample. Uh, you'll be provided a 10 microliter syringe, so you can see 1 through 10, so 1 microliter is what we're trying to, um, uh, to inject. Uh, typical uh, procedure here when you're injecting something or using a piece of glassware of any type. Um, not a bad idea to rinse with the next sample, so I'm just going to fill the syringe mostly full. Um, this particular sample is not hazardous, so I'm just going to put it in a waste beaker. We do that a couple of times, so always rinse with the sample that you're about to inject. And then on the last sample, um, it's good to rinse with a solvent, um, water or some other appropriate solvent. Some of our samples might leave a residue, and if you let it dry in the syringe, it gums up the syringe. Okay. So now I'm just putting the, sample, uh, the, the tip of the syringe into the vial, just holding it upside down. But the key part is the syringe tip is in the liquid, not in any air. just want to pull liquid into the syringe. Um, you could do the same thing kind of in the other direction. If you have a volumetric flask, you just put the syringe down instead of up. This is kind of easy to do. So again, we don't want any air, so typically pump this a little bit, get rid of any air bubbles, and then pull the barrel of the syringe until it's equal with the one microliter mark on the um, syringe barrel there, just take this out. And then what I like to do, here's my preferred technique, is I want to then pull this um, back so the sample is all in the barrel, there's none left in the tip. Okay? And then if you look closely, you'll be able to see the liquid, and then in front of that is an air bubble, because you've pulled all the sample out of the tip, and then you've even pulled some air in there. But that's fine. We've measured out one microliter of sample. So this is what we want to inject. There are two injection ports, um, but our column is hooked up to the front injection port. Underneath this um, nut here is a rubber septa, and this syringe does have a sharp point on it, so it should go through the rubber septa, but you want to be gentle. Don't jab it, don't push it too hard. Um, depending on how many times the, syringe, uh, the septum has been used, there might be a little bit of resistance. So you just kind of baby it in, you put it in the center of the port, you feel some resistance, you want to take it all the way down, and then I'm going to do two things in a relatively quick succession. I'm going to push this to inject the sample, and then I'm going to press the start button on the front of the instrument. So all the way down in the injection port, inject, and start. When you do that, this will start flashing, and instead of ready standby, it now says acquire. It's actually 
collecting the data from the sample you just injected.